Hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching for tech so 3 days back we flashed the new android 13 base evolution x and it's pretty much stable rom with the minor bugs that time i promised you to give the battery performance review of the rom on the 7th of september we got the another update of evolution x 7.1 so today in this video along with the battery performance result we will see the new change log details of new update there are some bad things are also happened in the Evolution X thread at XDA. The thread was closed as per the request of developer Anirim Bliss because of some issues but immediately after closing the thread, the next day we got this update so it's confirmed that the development of this ROM is going on and updates will be available via OTA. Developer still not confirmed that they stopped this project. So now without further ado let's get started with the full review of new update and battery performance of Evolution X. On the new adventure. I tried to download and flash the new update via OTA but it doesn't work for me and some users also reported that this happening with them also. Maybe it's the bug of OTA update so if you are facing this then flash the TWRP and boot to the TWRP. In TWRP tap install go to the data and under the system update folder you will get your downloaded OTA file and flash it. If you want the TWRP then tap advanced then tap install current TWRP once done tap reboot to the system without wiping data. After booting to the ROM we get the system update notification in status bar. Now let's check out the about phone here android version is still same like old build it is the android 13 with the same android 13 history. Evolution X version updated to the 7.1 security patch is of latest one is September 2022. Kanna version is same like old build it is Evolution X 4.9.227 build date is of 7 September 2022. Let's check out what changes has been made in the new build. In the app drawer now get the new game space application and the game space setting under the system evolver tab. This is the same android 12 feature game space application in which we get the different option to play the games without any interference. Under the notification modes we get the Danmaku notifications and the game space overlay which has the performance mode stay awake, FS info, notification modes. It also has the battery life date and the memory information available. Under sound and vibration they added the per app volume toggle which gives us the volume control for the specific application, the application which is running only instead of controlling the sound of whole system. Under the evolver and the buttons tab they added the click to partial screenshot toggle which helps to take the screenshot using the old traditional volume down plus power button. In the same evolver tab and under the quick setting we gave the data user summary at the bottom of the quick setting panel. Under the notification tab, they brought back the reticker notification where you get the long notification info with the app background color. Under the status bar, now they added more customization options like more battery styles for the status bar clock along with the lots of clock and the dates customizations. Under the buttons tab, they added the volume rocker wake up toggle which helps to wake up the phone using the volume buttons. Under the quick setting panel, new option smart pull down for the quick setting panel has been added. In the quick setting panel and the notification tab, they added the clock font size slider which helps to increase the size of clock in the quick setting panel and the status bar which gives the different look. In the quick setting panel, they added the mobile data tile. Battery percentage widget is working but it only displays the phone battery percentage. It will not show the connected Bluetooth devices battery percentage. These are all the features are added by the developers in the new version of Evolution X. Now let's check out the Geekbench performance of the ROM. Is it same or improved as compared to the old build? For the single core this time I got 513 and for multi core I got the score of 2046 which is very good score and better than the old builds. For the OpenGL GPU drivers I got the score of 2241 and for Hulkan graphics I got the score of 1833. Let's check out the comparison of results which you got on the last build. We got some lower CPU results as compared to the current results as you can check on the screen. While for the open gen Hulkan graphics score were superior on the old build as compared to the current build. As the score difference is negligible as compared to the current results and the ROM is super smooth but this time I felt some lag while accessing the quick setting panel. So it's time to show you the battery performance of the ROM. As I tested the results on the old build there may be slight difference in these results as per the usage. As the stock battery setting application didn't show me the correct results I used the better battery stat application. I used it for the 3 days, I calculated the single battery cycle, where in that battery cycle I connected the phone to the PC to transfer the files for just a minute 
at 19%. Because of that, I have divided the results in the two different parts. First is the 100 to 90%. Here, phone standby time is 18 hours and 23 minutes. And SOT is 4 hours and 21 minutes. So, if you combine total time, we got at least 23 hours of uses. Screen of battery drain is 1.4% per hour. So, for 10 hours of screen of time, battery drain will be 14%. This is the use list of applications here. Mostly used application is YouTube and other chatting applications like WhatsApp and Telegram. Some phone calling was also done here. This is another screenshot of remaining battery user from 19 to 3%. This SOT plus last SOT total we got 5 hours and 40 minutes of total screen on time. This test is done on the new battery replace in the OnePlus battery replacement scheme. In the hold users, I kept the Wi-Fi and the location on hold the time. Bluetooth user only while requirement AOD also kept off all the time. So what is conclusion of battery performance in one word? It's outstanding for 3300 mAh battery. Results are similar to the last CyberOS battery performance video. You can check that from the iCard. What is total charging time required to fully charge the phone? ROM supports the DAC charging and is charging the phone fully within 1 hour and 25 minutes. So this is all about the new update of Evolution X which seems very good. But you may face some other device specific bugs which I can't guarantee. Battery performance of this Android 13 based ROM is really very good. So I definitely recommend you to use this ROM as a daily driver. That's it for today guys. If you think I help you then please do like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon for the notification of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care. Bye bye.